Hi, I'm Stephen Lewis. I'm Priest Heath Warden with Butterfly Conservation. Butterfly Conservation bought this site in 2006 and I've been the warden since then. Thank you. So what is your role in Priest Heath? I have to look after the site. It's a big site, 60 hectares in all. Uh, a lot of the site was ploughed up after the war and we're restoring that back to Heathland and that has been a very ambitious and challenging project. My main focus is to conserve the colony of silver studded blue butterflies that are here uh, and to spread the available habitat for them. So you mentioned the silver studded blue butterfly. Um, when are the peak times to come and visit the butterfly? Uh, the butterfly usually uh, starts emerging uh, middle of June and it has about a six week flight period so it goes on till roughly the end of July but it does vary year on year. This year they were a little bit early so they'll be finishing about now. And when are they most frequent, like where are they most frequently spotted? Most frequently seen on the Heathland areas like the area we've got here. Uh, <coughs> they, uh, you see the males and the, and the females, the males are blue females are dark brown in colour, uh, just flying low, fluttering low amongst the heather and the grasses. So they're attracted to heather mostly as a plant? Yes, the females will lay their eggs mainly on the heather. Yeah, and um, why is this heath like a special place for the butterflies? Because it's the last sanctuary in the Midlands where you can find these species. It used to be more widespread. But here in the UK, we have lost over 80% of our heathland in the last 200 years. A lot of it has been ploughed up, as part of it has been ploughed up here at Priest Heath. Some of it's been planted with conifer trees, some of it's been basically concreted over and developed. Some of it's just been neglected and allowed to turn into woodland. So the silver sided blue would have been more commonplace in this area, but a lot of the sites where it was have been lost and this is the last place in the whole of the Midlands where it survives, so we feel this is a really special place. So you're talking about expanding the um, species. Mm. How are you planning on doing that? <clears throat> As I said, a lot of the land here was ploughed up in the 1960s and 1970s, used to grow crops, potatoes, wheat, barley, beans, that sort of thing. Despite the fact that it's common land and commoners have rights here, to put on their grazing animals. They can't graze it, of course, when it's been ploughed up and yeah. used to grow crops. So when we bought the site in 2006, we stopped all the uh, agricultural farming uh, and looked at restoring these areas back to Heathland. It's an extremely challenging process, but we have had a lot of success. And we're now just beginning to find that the silver sided blues are beginning to use those areas for breeding. Oh. which is a key factor. That's brilliant. And what's their relationship with the ants? The butterflies fly in the summer. Males mate with the females. Females lay the eggs mainly on heather, but they will use one or two other plants as well. The females sense where they lay their eggs is close to an ant's nest. The egg stays there throughout the winter. It's tiny, 0.8 of a millimetre in diameter. No matter how cold it gets or how deep the snow is, the egg stays there, attached to the plant throughout the winter. It hatches as a tiny caterpillar in April or May. <clears throat> as soon as it hatches as a tiny caterpillar, the ants pick it up, take it to their nest. They bring it out of their nests to allow the caterpillar to feed. It feeds mainly on heather. We'll also use bird's foot trefoil. Whilst it feeds, the <clears throat> Ants protect the caterpillar from being predated by spiders or being parasitized by small wasps which like to come along and inject their eggs into the body of the yeah. caterpillar. That's clever. It's very clever. Very clever. <laughs> In return, the caterpillar gives the ants sugary secretions from a gland at the rear of its body. So it's a beneficial relationship to both parties and that's called a symbiotic relationship. Beneficial to the ant beneficial to the caterpillar. The caterpillar goes through various instars, where it feeds, sheds its skin, feeds, grows some more, sheds its skin, goes through about three instars, and then will pupate in an ant's nest. The ants continue to look after it in their nest. When it's ready to emerge in the summer, in a warm morning,
climbs up a stem of vegetation. For the first hour of its life, it can't fly until it's pumped up its wings, so it's vulnerable. The ants continue to protect it by crawling all over it, and the butterfly continues to give the ants sugary fluids, mainly from its face. Mm. After about an hour, the butterfly is ready to fly off, find a mate, and the whole life cycle starts again. And how long do they normally live for? Each individual will live for about four or five days. Oh. No life really, is no, it? No, no life. <laughs>